Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I am Hamad Youssef. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa ratified and issued Law 41 of 2018, stipulating the ratification of cooperation agreements between Bahrain and Cyprus to combat terrorism, narcotics, and psychedelic drugs, illegal immigration, and other crimes. The agreement signed on the 9th of March 2015 is associated with this law. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received today at Safriya Palace the U.S. Ambassador to the Kingdom, Justin Hicks Barrel, who presented to His Majesty Admiral Scott Sterney, Commander of the U.S. Navy in the Central Command, Commander of the Fifth Fleet. His Majesty welcomed the Ambassador and Admiral Sterney and praised the historic bilateral relations and the joint co coordination. He hailed the progress witnessed by the Bahraini U.S. relations in all fields, especially in the defense and military fields. He praised the active role played by the U.S. administration in cooperation with the front countries in consolidating security, stability and international peace. His Majesty stressed Bahrain's support for all international efforts. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, received today Deputy Prime Minister Sheikh Mohammed bin Mubarak Al Khalifa at Gdaybiya Palace. He presented His Royal Highness with the final report on key policies and initiatives that will inform the upcoming Government Action Plan of 2019 to 2022. This follows directives issued by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince during the 2017 Government Forum for government officials to lead a series of workshops to identify mechanisms and and key priority areas for incorporation into the government's future goals. The report follows a series of workshops and coordination meetings held between November 2017 and May 2018, which have led to the development of over 106 new initiatives and 29 policies. This included four workshops focused on the following areas. Sustainable economic development strengthening the kingdom's long-term fiscal security and fast-tracking infrastructure project policies, legislation and enhancing government performance, public services and enhancing environmental protection. His Royal Highness highlighted that the Kingdom's core objective is to ensure sustainable development that meets citizens' aspirations and added that the workshops will play an important role in ensuring that a brighter future for all Bahrainis is being delivered in line with a clear framework. He expressed thanks and appreciation to the Deputy Prime Minister for the key role he has played in leading government workshops and to Deputy Prime Ministers and all those who have participated in the wor government workshops which have each underscored the importance of continuing collaboration to drive forward national development and government efficiency. Sheikh Mohammed bin Mubarak thanked His Royal Highness for recognizing the success of the coordination meetings and workshops and highlighted his crucial role in meeting the goals of the government forum and promoting excellence across Bahrain's key sectors. He affirmed that the final report that will inform the government's future goals is centered on strengthening the role played by citizens and accelerating sustainable development. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa congratulated Kuwait on launching the first flight of Kuwait Airways from the new passenger Terminal 4 at Kuwait International Airport which chose Bahrain International Airport as its first destination in the distinguished celebration. His Royal Highness said that Bahrain rejoices at any success achieved by the brotherly countries pointing out to the special status enjoyed by the strong relations between Bahrain and Kuwait. His Royal Highness said the launch of this trip from Kuwait to Bahrain is one of the events that will remain a memory in line of the brotherly and historical ties thanks to the support of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and the Emir of Kuwait, His Highness Sheikh Sabah Al Ahmed Al Jabbar Al Sabah. The meeting was attended by Minister of Finance Sheikh Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa and the Minister of Transportation and Communication Kamal bin Ahmed Mohammed. The Kuwaiti delegation, comprising of the Minister of State for Housing Affairs, Minister of State for Services Affairs Dr. Jinnah Ramadan, conveyed to His Royal Highness the greetings of the Emir of Kuwait and the Crown Prince and their wishes of success to Bahrain and its people. His Royal Highness asked them to convey greetings and best wishes to the Emir of Kuwait and the Crown Prince. His Royal Highness wished them luck and success to contribute to the growth of the air transport and logistics sector and its vital income in the development of the economic aspects. He pointed out that the air traffic between the two countries has been continuously active since the mid-60s, which is the basis of cooperation between the two countries and the agreements in this area. He affirmed the Kingdom's support for continued cooperation and coordination with Kuwait in the aviation sector as well as other fields. 
The Kuwaiti delegation expressed thanks and appreciation for the warm reception and participation in the celebration of this important event, stressing the strength of the bilateral ties. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa held yesterday his weekly majlis at Rafah Palace. Members of the Royal Family, senior government officials, members of the Shura and Representatives Councils, members of the Municipal Council, religious and community leaders, journalists and diplomats attended the majlis. His Royal Highness welcomed the visitors at the weekly majlis, which demonstrates Bahrain's commitment to rooted traditions and values that are underpinned by His Majesty's aspiration to maintain a strong bond among Bahrain society. The visitors extended their appreciation and gratitude to His Royal Highness and emphasized that the important role His Royal Highness plays in advancing sustainable development to guarantee prosperity and opportunity for the people of Bahrain.
The Minister of Finance, Sheikh Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, was at the airport to welcome his Kuwaiti counterpart, Dr. Naif Al Hajraf, who arrived in Bahrain aboard Kuwait Airways' inaugural flight from Kuwait International Airport, new passenger terminal 4. Also present were the Minister of Transportation and Telecommunications, Kamal bin Ahmed Mohammed, Chairman of Gulf Air Holding Group, Dean of Diplomatic Corps, Kuwaiti Ambassador to Bahrain, Sheikh Azam Mubarak Al Sabah, and other officials. The Minister of Finance stressed the importance of improving the level of cooperation between Bahrain and Kuwait and underline the efforts of both countries' governments to strengthen these relations. The new terminal, which will be used exclusively by Kuwait Airways and its subsidiaries, will play an important role in the ongoing development of Kuwait's aviation industry. It also brings the country another step closer towards its vision 2035 of becoming a leading financial and commercial center. The Minister of Transportation hailed Kuwait's rapid development, particularly in its aviation industry, and expressed his appreciation to Kuwait Airlines for choosing Bahrain as its first destination from the new terminal. His Highness Sheikh Sabah Al Ahmed Al Jabbar Al Sabah personally inaugurated that new passenger terminal which has a total area of 55,000 square meters, 14 departure gates consisting of 9 bridge gates and 5 ground gates as well as 10 arrival gates. Under the patronage of the Minister of Justice, Islamic Affairs and Endowments, Sheikh Khalid bin Ali Al Khalifa, a lecture was organized by the Institution of Judicial and Legal Studies in cooperation with the National Committee for Combating Human Trafficking under the title The Kingdom of Bahrain's Efforts in Combating Trafficking in Human Beings, Lessons Learned and Future Considerations. Bahrain, when it came to set the uh, primary law to combat this crime back in 2008, built it based on the Palermo Protocol uh, as per the United Nations Office on Drugs and Crime and the United Nations relevant conventions. So the starting point was to have the universally accepted definition of this uh, crime and from there on we started building the processes. The, rightly said by you, the starting point is the judiciary approach and we needed to first have a unified uh, uh, definition that works uh, across borders because uh, trafficking is a cross-border crime and as such we need to be in sync with both uh, uh, countries of origin as well as international conventions. The Gulf region is actually targeted by the organized crime because uh, it's a, a favorable and it's a very favorite destination country for trafficking in human beings because of uh, uh, the elements of excellence of uh, the Gulf countries when it comes to the financial stability, political stability, uh, connectivity when it comes to travel, so it's a travel and a trade hub, and that's why uh, the organized crime is targeting it from the top countries of destination to actually achieve the uh, interest that they are uh, uh, seeking. Based on such knowledge and commitment of uh, the Gulf countries to uh, uh, face those challenges, we're having partnerships in uh, uh, in the GCC countries mm -hmm. to uh, develop the national uh, mechanism on combating human trafficking and uh, uh, also the care uh, uh, that is provided to the victims of human uh, trafficking. You can take the Kingdom of Bahrain as an example yeah. because we have worked through the past five, six years with the National uh, Committee on Combating Human uh, uh, Trafficking that had the commitment not only to improve its national mechanism on detecting, uh, investigating and prosecuting the cases of human trafficking, but also to provide full uh, uh, support and care for the victims of human trafficking. The U.S. City 2030 Advisory Council held a concluding session in which the Secretary General of the Supreme Council for Women, Dr. Halil Ansari, and the Minister of Youth and Sports, Hisham al Jodar, partnered for the Youth Voice 2030 program from Temkin, the Representatives Council, the Legislation and Legal Opinion Commission, and the Bahrain Institute for Political Development. The opening session was chaired by the Council's President, Yusuf al Bedr. The Council discussed a number of suggestions related to youth centers and sports clubs, membership of women and youth, 
in the boards of sports clubs and the development of youth city programs, the revival of the university debate program, the importance of repeating elections in youth city and the establishment of a youth advisory council. El Jodor noted that support of His Majesty the King to the youth and sports movements in the kingdom, adding that the ministry is keen on achieving the aspirations of the youth and provide programs and activities. Al Ansari hailed the board's interest in women's issues, noting that the results of the youth voice program develops the youth political participation and raises awareness on the importance of equal representation of women in leading and decision-making positions. The council recommended to develop proposals to support the efforts of the Ministry of Youth and Sports, especially in related to the development of the youth city programs. Many exercises the Supreme Council for Women is looking after for the sake of encouraging the youth for the upcoming parliamentarian and municipality elections. Uh, today we have witnessed a simulation program kind of uh, activity where the youth spoke about their hopes, uh, their aspirations, uh, uh, how do they see that the 2030 vision is to be implemented in the future or how uh, uh, organizations like Supreme Council for Women and the Ministry of Youth uh, can improve their work in order to meet uh, uh, their aspirations. This program is mainly to simulate the real election and uh, to make the youth ready to participate in the Kamil election. So, uh, so far within this program, they have uh, simulated uh, different type of sessions, activities in the election and how to know more about their uh, rights, their responsibility. So I'm sure the most of the youth who participated in this program are ready uh, for the real life and to compete. It developed me a lot, it developed my skills a lot, uh, my leadership skills, communication skills. We have a lot of things to discuss, uh, something about uh, family issues, uh, social insurance issues, and uh, we will discuss all this within two years. It pushed me out of my comfort zone and it challenged me and I think this is exactly a simulation of the future of uh, an actual council of representatives uh, like the MPs. And uh, of course, after joining this um, council, I have hopes for the future and hopes and visions for the future to join uh, a council, inshallah, and represent uh, the people. This experience really help, will help me in the future because I'm aiming to be an ambassador, especially because it's like all protocols that we're learning for the future. Bahrain Red Crescent Society held an open seminar welcoming the Goodwill Ambassador who arrived in Bahrain during his journey across the world without taking a single flight at the Society headquarters. More on this report with Habab al -Ghaffar. A Danish Goodwill Ambassador and Traveller who is on a journey across the world without taking a single flight has arrived in Bahrain. He has been warmly welcomed by Bahrain Crescent Society, which aims at spreading peace, meet the needs and improve the lives of people without discrimination as to nationality, race, religious beliefs, class or political opinions, and those values are the cornerstones of the Bahraini culture. The idea that we are representing as a movement 191 societies all over the world. It's a network of Red Cross and Red Crescent. And he utilized that network for the communication. So he go every country as if there is a, an embassy for the movement. And he communicate, they take care of him, so he'll have a friends everywhere. And we want to implement this to our youth. We want this message to go to any youth in Bahrain. If they decided to go in any place in the world, not necessarily the whole world, even in just one of the continent, like Africa or Asia, so we can help. We can establish communication with the Red Crescent and Red Cross in those countries. They will receive them, they will help them, and they will have friends everywhere. He started his journey from Denmark on October 10, 2013, and plans to visit a total of 203 nations without taking a single flight. He has traveled to 153 countries so far. Bahrain is the 154th and has captivated him by its beauty. What I think is unique about Bahrain is certainly the history of Bahrain, uh, certainly all the history that has been discovered about the past, the past five, six thousand years. 
Uh, I'm, I'm the, the, the Dilman uh, civilization. I, I think that's astonishing. I've been to every country in the Gulf now, and I haven't seen anyone that can match that kind of history. So sometimes you just have to recognize that even though you have a small country, it can have big value and can have a big heart. The seminar was a great opportunity to learn more about his incredible experience. Today I will talk about the world of the Red Cross and the Red Crescent. I will be talking about the beginning of the movement and how it has spread around the world. I'll be talking about my journey and my experience traveling through 154 countries without flying now. And I still have 49 countries to go to. So I'll talk about not having been home for four years and nine months and how I keep motivation and why I continue to travel. By improving humanitarian standards, working as partners in development, supporting healthier and safer communities, we help reduce vulnerabilities, strengthen resilience and foster a culture of peace around the world. Bahrain's dazzling history, unique spirit and big heart makes it a must-visit destination on a journey of peace. Reporting for Bahrain International, I'm Heba Abdul Ghaffar.